Hey, hey, welcome back. Today in the workshop, we're going to clad our wall. But first, here's a jingle. If you've watched the series on building the cis port, then you'll remember that we sacrificed the plywood that was on this wall to make the sustainer drawers. And that worked very well. But it now leaves me with a gap and a pretty ugly wall. Today I'm going to clad this wall and get it ready for the first fit of the electrics. The design of the wall is really quite simple and we're going to copy the design of this wall here. There's a series of panels at the bottom, there's a series of panels at the top and then there's a channel that separates the two and inside that channel I've run the electrics that gives me a lot of flexibility from where I put my electrical outlets. So we're going to start off by building the frame. Behind the wall is obviously a simple frame that supports the wall. There's a beam that sits a 1000 millimetres up, a metre up. There's then a channel that's got 90 millimetres inside it. And then there's a beam that sits at 2 metres up from the floor. The position of the top beam at 2 metres is pretty important because that gives me a structurally sound anchor point if I ever want to put some cabinets up onto that wall. I'm going to do something similar on the wall that we're about to build today. There's a beam towards the bottom of the floor and then a second beam or a third beam centre point on this panel. As well as that beam there, there's a beam behind this channel and again a beam on centre point. So one, two, three, four, five, six beams fastened to the wall and then it's simply a matter of putting the cladding onto those walls. Let's go and have a look at this wall over here. So this is our wall. We'll start off by putting a beam across here at a metre's height. There's already a beam on the stud wall at the bottom, so I'll then put a beam at centre point around about 500 millimetres. From that beam I'll then measure up 90 millimetres and we'll run a second beam across here and that will create the channel for the electrics. We'll then put a third beam up at the 2 metre height and then a beam halfway down to do the final fix. And then we'll put the cladding on. We use this, this is just a bit of scrap material that's knocking around the workshop. No idea where it came from but I seem to have quite a lot of it left over. And this is oh, a nominal 40 by 40 millimeter stock. So we'll take a simple measurement across here and we'll drop the battens in between the beams on the stud wall. We'll just use relative dimensioning to give us the position of this beam. So we'll make a cut about there. And then we'll use the Capex saw to cut that to size. And now I'm looking here just for a nice resistance fit inside here. And now we just need to tow it into these beams here. I'm going to use pocket hole joinery. I don't particularly want to be banging this wall, say there's a decorated room on the other side of this now, and I don't want to damage that. So we're just going to use pocket hole joinery to just fix that into position. That's a frame in place. We now can clad this bottom half. This is what we're using. It's a pine cladding. You can see it's already got the tongue and the groove um, cut into this. Just came from eBay. Just do a search on pine cladding and there's loads of this stuff available. Really cheap. This is a nominal 110 millimeters wide, measured from the visible face, so ignoring the tongue. It's about just over two um, just over two meters in length. So I now want to chop these down to the right size. I know my floor is not straight, so I've just laid a batten on the floor, just rested it there to give me a reference surface. 
This end is 103.5 millimeters, and this end is 105.0 millimeters. So we'll cut everything to 105.0. That'll make it easier for us and give us a nice level surface. Um, so I need to cut a number of these at 105.0. The length of this wall is 204.0, so just over 2 millimetres. And we know this is 110 millimetres, so that's sort of kind of about, what, 19 or 20 pieces. So we'll cut 19 pieces at 105.0, and we'll do that on the capex. So I've set the capex up, I've set it for a cut of 105.0 and I've put the side extension on and used the flag stop to give me a repeatable cut. I'm going to cut the first one, check it, make sure we're okay, then I'm going to batch these out to give me 20 pieces that we can then put on the wall. Perfect. So that's all 20 pieces cut, so now we can go ahead and put them on the wall. We'll start from this pillar here, and we'll put the tongue against that pillar. And I'll just adjust this one so it's straight, with the smallest of gaps to this pillar. Now don't forget, when we finish the workshop, there'll be more cladding coming around the side here, so that will hide any variance in the level of that wall. So we'll see how well we're doing, spirit level, and that will be good there. So we'll now just put a tack in the top of this. Now we'll just check that for square again, and that was pretty fine to me. And we'll just tack this one into place. Okay, now before it gets too hard, I'm just going to take the flat piece off the floor because the more, obviously, I put on there, the more that will be clamped by the pressure of the wood. And then we just work our way along. Just put it in, put it up to the one that we've already got in place, make sure the top's nice and level, and then tap that into position. Check ourselves, make sure we're maintaining things. Perfect. Now we work our way along. So that's pretty much got us where we need to be. That's the bottom panel almost complete. I've got a small gap here. If I just measure that gap, that's 40 eight at the top and at the bottom here it's 45. I'm going to leave a small gap so I'll cut it at 43 at the bottom and 46 at the top and that's just to give the wall some expansion and contraction. Remember we left a small gap at the far end so I'll leave a small gap here. This will be finished, there will be some architrave going around this door space anyway just to tidy things up. 46 at the top, 46, and 43 down here at the bottom. And we'll just use a TS55 to, to trim this down to size. We'll put some sacrificial pieces here just to support the weight and we'll clamp those into position. Just put those two pieces of wood together and that just gives something for the track to sit on. Line the track up with the two marks. Come with the TS55. The TS55 I've set to a cut of just over 15 millimeters and that's because this material is 15 millimeters thick. We can make the cut.
and now we can slot this piece into its final position. And that's pretty much it. Panelling done, nothing too complicated about panelling at all. I'm going to go ahead and finish that off. I'll do the top part of the section. I'll leave a channel that's about 90 millimetres deep in the middle to run our cables in, uh, beam at the top two metres and then one in the centre exactly as we did before. But I'm going to leave the end two pieces off for now because I need those so we can run the cables or the electrician can run the cables round to the front of the garage. So just leave that channel there for the electrics. So next time we come back together, the first fit of the electrics should be in and we'll make the face cap here that's going to hold the electric sockets. And for that, we'll use the Festool MFS system, which will be a new tool in the workshop. See you next time.